everyone, my name is Abby and I'm a watercolor artist in Cincinnati, Ohio. Thanks so much for joining me. This tutorial was inspired by India's national bird, the peacock. Um, so in the following video, I'm going to show you guys all the materials that you'll need as well as the steps that you'll take to paint this guy. I hope it's really fun and relaxing for you and as you work through it, please leave comments and questions so that I know how to make these tutorials better for you in the future. Happy painting! So first we need to talk about paper. Um, in order to achieve the most vibrant colors, I always recommend going with professional grade watercolor paper. And I always purchase blocks as opposed to pads because when you work with a watercolor block of paper, it keeps your paper from warping. I always go with the Winsor Newton brand just because that's what I prefer and it's very high quality. And then I always get the cold pressed paper because it has a, a very smooth finish and it's easy to work with. I recommend starting with a 7 by 10 inch block because it's not that big of an investment and you get the high quality paper. For this exercise, I'm going to use the Derwent Ink Tense Paint Pan Travel Set and I'm using palette number 2. These kits are very affordable and transportable and they come with a watercolor brush that you can actually fill with water which eliminates your need for a water cup. So the kit is about $20 as well as the paper, so you're looking at like a $40 investment. And again, I just want to show you this convenient watercolor brush. It unscrews, screws right back together. You just put water in it. Um, super convenient and really simple to use. So to get started, we need to first draw our peacock. So you're going to need a pencil, and then you're going to need an eraser. And then finally, you'll need like a paper towel or a towel since we all know those paper products are hard to come by right now. So now we're ready to start drawing our peacock. Um, I'm going to show you this part. You can definitely fast forward if you don't feel the need to watch it. So to get started, I'm going to review some of the proportions of the peacock that I painted. Um, so you'll notice that from the crest to the beak, is a little over half of the full length of the body that we're going to paint today. So I'm just going to start by making some markings on my paper. Okay, so now you have your drawing ready to go. Make sure to get rid of any unnecessary pencil lines because you don't want those hanging out in the end. I'm going to start with the head crest feathers and I always work from left to right on my paper since I'm right handed. So we're going to start with the wet on wet technique, which is where you put water on the paper first before you add colors. So you're going to have to use the little push button so you want to make sure to get enough water on the paper that the color can bleed out, but you don't want puddles just sitting there. So I'm going to go ahead and wet all of the crest feathers. And then I'm going to start adding color by using my turquoise hue. And you want to make sure to let the color bleed out organically. You don't want to make this too contrived. So once I'm done adding the base layer color for the head crest, I'm then going to start doing the same thing for the rest of my peacock's body. So again, I'm just going to add water to all the areas where I want the turquoise hue to bleed into. And I'm going to make sure to leave all the spaces that I want to be white completely dry so that none of my color bleeds into those areas. Now, while my turquoise layer is still a little bit wet, I'm going to start adding some French ultramarine color right around my eye.
And now I'm going to bring in some more vibrance to his body by adding some more layers of the turquoise hue. So each time you just want to add a little bit of water with some pigment and make sure that you blend all the layers together very well. So while I let his body dry a little bit, I'm going to go back to my peacock's face and start adding some more details up there. As you work with watercolor more and more, you're going to learn that you kind of jump around your composition because as one area dries, you can start adding details to another. So right now I'm starting to add some greens as well as a little bit of sherbet lemon to his face. And then I'm also going to add the sherbet lemon to his crest as well as his body. It's such a beautiful color to add some highlights and some brightness to your painting. And now we're going to start adding some of those darker details, again using some French ultramarine as well as some navy blue. With watercolor, you always want to start with your lights and end with your darks. So using these darker blues, we're just going to add some details, um, some spaces where we want to call out the beak, and then I'm also going to add some to the top of his head. So now that you have this beautiful wash of color, your base layer, we're really going to focus on the dark blue details. I want you to get as much pigment as you can in the tip of your brush, and I don't want you to have too much water in your brush because you want to make sure that these details can be very precise. And also notice how some of my pigments are still bleeding out. Um, so portions of my painting are still wet. They're not as wet as when I first put the water down, but they're wet enough that when I put down a bit of pigment, it still starts to bleed out with the wash that's already there. Now I'm going to focus on my peacock's beak, and I need kind of a purpley color, so I'm going to mix some fuchsia with some French ultramarine. And I'm just going to mix mine right on my paper. It's always wise to have some scrap paper available so that you can mix your colors on there and you won't ruin your masterpiece. So once I get my purple hue, I'm just going to add a little bit of wash to the top of his beak to define that area. Okay, so now we're going to work on his eye, which is always my favorite part because that's when you really start bringing life to your wildlife painting. So first I'm just going to lay down some clear water, and then I'm going to use some tangerine hue for the base color. And once I get my base wash, I'm going to use some sepia ink and a little bit of the red oxide to start adding some dimension. At this point, the rest of your painting should be fairly dry, so you can go back again with another layer of your dark navy or your French ultramarine and just start calling out those details even more.
And now that his eyes should be all dry, you should be able to go back in and add a really dark pupil using your sepia ink hue. Now I want to bring a little bit of that purple color back into its head crest, so I'm going to remix my color again. And I'm finally going to introduce a little bit of white because I want this to be very light, so I'm just going to add in a little bit of a wash in its head crest. So there's your very proud peacock. Now you want to get rid of all your pencil lines once it's completely dry. So just take your eraser there and just make sure all those pencil marks are gone. One thing that I was unhappy about was the shape of my peacock's beak. And um, when I look at my original that I did, I kind of liked that, that placement and the overall shape of his head a little bit better. So I'm just going to add a little bit of detail underneath its beak so that I can fix that shape. And then this isn't necessary, but I'm actually going to go in and add another layer of detail just so that I can define my edges a little bit more. So finally, to finish them off, I just wanted to show you guys how to add that fun watercolor splatter. Um, this always brings a lot of energy to your painting. It just helps to fill all that white space. So what you're going to do is you're going to squeeze out pretty much water into the tip of your brush. I want you guys to see this. So you, you really want those droplets to start actually coming out of your brush like that. And then I'm going to use my Sherbert Lemon color and then some of the turquoise as well. You can either drop it from high above and then you'll get a pretty big splatter, or a pretty big drop. Or you can just tap the edge of your brush like this and you can see where I'm starting to get a little bit of that splatter. If you're doing this on a table where you do not want to get paint, um, I would recommend putting some paper underneath. So you can add as much or as little as you like. But again, it really just brings some magical energy to your painting. So there's your masterpiece. I want to see what you guys did. Please share photos with me through social media. And please share your comments below so that I can know what you liked and what you didn't like about this first tutorial. And hopefully I'll be sharing some more in the upcoming weeks. Thanks again, you guys. Until next time.